If you're hoping for the lightning in a bottle of its predecessor, Carry On, you'll be a bit disappointed by this sequel that is competent enough but only offers a faint hum and a few crackles as the star-crossed frenemies turned boyfriends road trip across America. It is not my task to soothe your ego. Before I saw Enola Holmes, I read about Evelina Cooper, niece to Sherlock Holmes, who takes readers on a rousing jaunt through magical alternative Victorian London. According to this self-help book, we all need one compass to guide our passion, otherwise we will struggle to reach our top-level goals, provided we have the perseverance to follow it. This children's coming-of-age novel offers an exciting glimpse of the more nuanced and sprawling narratives of Zaphon's later career. A charming novel about the life of a Russian count sentenced by tribunal to indefinite house arrest at the Metropole Hotel in Moscow. An inspiring collection of essays written by and for women in top leadership positions. A disappointing espionage novel set in 1950s France about siblings who get caught up in a CIA mission that reads like poor fanfiction. Skip a mind-expanding, belief-altering, spirit-humbling nonfiction read about the history and present of humanity. Please read this book. In the follow-up to his bestseller Sapiens, Harari asks humanity what it will do with its godlike powers and what future are we writing by pursuing them. A charming lesbian magic realism novel about mermaids that demands a second reading to fully comprehend. An ethereal Australian coming-of-age novel narrated by an older man from the other side of trauma. A stunning collection of essays by a science fiction Hugo Award winner who rejects the notion that the future must be white, male, and middle class. Actress and activist Nichelle Nichols' foray into science fiction writing is a very interesting experience, if you can manage to track down a copy of her elusive first and last novel. An atmospheric novel about the devastation caused by families that fall apart and the hope that rises from the families we find. The continuing adventures of Evelina Cooper in a sequel that expands the world building and includes more character growth than its predecessor. Evelina Cooper's finale is a rollicking non-stop action-adventure payoff to all the setups of the preceding two books. Did you know that Disney's 1986 movie The Great Mess Detective was based on a classic children's book series that began in the 1950s? Now you do! A fragmented memoir that explores but does not explain transness and genderqueer experiences. So this is either the second or the fifth book in the series, which introduces Radigan and the author's amusing tendency for anachronistic wall-breaking. Oddly racist and empiricist for a children's book about mass detectives, although I've since learned that a lot of British children's lit was like this in the 1970s. I would like this coming-of-age story about an orphaned young black girl discovering her parentage in small-town northern Ontario much more if the author hadn't turned out to be an elderly white lady. A lightning rod for toxic masculinity, what it is and what it generates, written in the run-up to the 2016 election. My introduction to the lit RPG genre was so full of cringe-inducing depictions of women that I will not be coming back for more anytime soon. Skip? Slate's quirky memoir, An Act of Defiance Against Misogyny and Oppression, is a delightful palate cleanser. A beautiful yet heartbreaking novel about complicated people doing terrible things to survive tumultuous times. A collection of South Korean short stories written by three prominent female writers dealing with the obstacles faced by women during the rapid modernization and government violence of the 1980s. A short story anthology of explicit and implicit accusations against the totalitarian regime written by an anonymous author still living and working in North Korea. The sequel to The Courage to Be Disliked sets out to further explain the three life tasks with the common sense conclusion that self-love is the key to self-reliance and happiness. The incredibly moving and deeply powerful first memoir of former flotist Michelle Obama is a must-read for any woman with passion and ambition. This Nobel Peace Prize in Literature and the definition of a slow burn romance asks, how much would you sacrifice in the name of professional dignity? The uplifting memoir of Joy Harjo, a member of the Muscogee Nation and woman who survived to thrive when the social order around her wanted only to see her fail. A collection of Canadian short stories and flash fiction that professes to explore the complicated and uncomfortable which is how I felt after reading the work of a white bisexual woman striving to be diverse. A delightful memoir that pulses with life and brilliantly demonstrates the intersectionality of queerness, disability, and performance. The internationally acclaimed novel about life in one of Rio de Janeiro's most notorious slums is a spectacularly written character study that did a wonderful job of putting me off men for the rest of my life. Thank you, Linz. If you squint, you may find influences from the American 60s social and feminist movements in the fourth entry to the Great Mouse Detective series. An Australian epic masterpiece of character and atmosphere whose expertly balanced tension and relief had me turning pages well into the night and early morning. An epistolary novel recounting the life of Rome's first emperor which grapples with the philosophical question on the nature of power and humanity. 
part memoir and part manifesto, this step-by-step guide on how to change structures and stop the spread of racist beliefs is a must-read. This fictional account of a band of Jewish partisans fighting in World War II is difficult both to categorize and summarize and definitely not accessible to mainstream readers. A YA LGBTQ fantasy novel that attempted to navigate the stormy seas of race, sexuality, gender, and colonialism but runs aground on harmful tropes and stereotypes. Another high-spirited adventure novel from Robert Louis Stevenson, though not as memorable as Treasure Island. This road trip novel through the American South is a haunting rumination on race, identity, loss, and belonging in the 21st century that deserves to be in the canon of American literature. A thoroughly enjoyable and not at all mansplaining non-fiction study of the systems that create, maintain, and confront patriarchy as a social system. A must read. It seems to me that the further Basil got from England and the Victorian era, the more interesting and engaging his series became, especially in the fifth and final written by original author Eve Titus. An unconventional slice-of-life novel about a young girl growing up in the rapidly modernizing Istanbul of the 1970s. A novel set among a traveling circus during World War II, this book was somehow both immensely readable yet mediocre and forgettable. Skip! Female spies? Russian literature? Second-person narration? This novel based on a true story from the CIA's cultural cold war is not to be missed. French delivers a deliciously nuanced take on the police procedural in her debut novel where friendship and trust are placed above the cheap thrills so common in pot-boiler detective fiction. This explosive feminist narrative strips back the layers of patriarchy and misogyny in modern-day South Korea in a surprisingly short book that sometimes reads like a report rather than a novel. Recounting the struggles of four women trying to make it in beauty-obsessed and competitive Seoul, this novel reminded me how happy I am to live in Jelanamdo. Four years, a disastrous American presidency, and a global pandemic have given me an even greater appreciation for this Spanish Gothic masterpiece. Zaphon's second entry in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books series is an even more achingly haunting and intimate tale of love, ambition, and loss. Curiously lighter in tone than the previous two, this is a functional novel meant to fuse narrative threads together before the fourth and final entry of the series. From the author of The Gender Knot comes a brutally honest novel dealing with the realities of domestic violence against women and children. This LGBT novel set during the 1918 influenza in Ireland was a whirlwind adventure that left me equally thrilled and chilled. The groundbreaking play which showed the authentic struggles of black American life on stage for the first time in 1959 is still an infuriatingly accurate depiction of black life in America in 2020. Black Lives Matter! The first book in Pullman's celebrated and controversial trilogy that asks big moral and philosophical questions about the nature of humanity, the universe, and God. The second book in Pullman's trilogy introduces more characters across parallel worlds and lays the groundwork for the big finale. The third book in Pullman's trilogy kills the authority, aka God, while two preteens save the multiverse with their budding love. After reading this murder mystery satirizing current identity politics and social media trends, I needed to seek counseling, take time to reflect, and have hopefully emerged a better, stronger, and more inclusive book reviewer. This charming 19th century novel about the intrigues of a fictional European court is essentially about the breakdown of marriage communication. An aging and inept British bureaucrat takes on Big Pharma as he tries to track down his wife's killers. Difficult and dense but never dull, this novel about Spanish emigrants to Manhattan in the 1930s is an enigma. A timely and much-needed self-help book for white people to acknowledge and overcome the emotions and behaviors that keep racist systems in place. This novel about mass extinctions and hope against all odds had some glimmering passages, but the human element was disappointingly trite and banal. A short story anthology where each entry focuses on some aspect of the mother-daughter relationship that I probably would have enjoyed more if I weren't a confirmed genetic dead end. A beautifully non-linear story of two Czech sisters separated emotionally and geographically by war told by the grandchildren in their care. 